The Wall Street Journal wrote a fantastic piece, a highly respected gentleman, Christopher DeMuth. And uh, this piece was just in the Wall Street Journal, weekend edition. And Trump rewrites the book on emergencies. That's what's happened, too. And we uh, just read one paragraph. He's given pride of place to federalism and private enterprise, lauding the patriotism and proficiency of our fantastic governors and mayors, meaning I do call them fantastic when it's appropriate, and our incredible business leaders and genius companies. I guess I probably use those terms, too, when they're doing a good job. When they're not doing a good job, I don't use those terms. Our heroic doctors and nurses and orderlies and our tremendous truckers, they have all done good jobs by shouting out many of them by name and documenting their deeds on a fully daily basis. He has vivified the American way in action. Once it was reluctantly aroused. It was hard to get it aroused, and it is hard to get it aroused, but we got it aroused. When asked why he has not issued orders for nationwide home and business lockdowns, he has emphasized that the intensity of the epidemic varies widely and is best met by calibrated state and local judgments. That's the judgments of governors and local people. And added pointedly that such steps would conflict with the Constitution. But very importantly, he's, he's just a very respected gentleman. To see this was a very nice feeling, not for me necessarily, but for all of the people that have worked with us. I mean, they've, they've worked so hard and we've developed tests that are so fantastic. We've, we've um, come up with things that nobody had ever heard of. And we did it during, during this pandemic. We did it under pressure. It's called reaction under pressure. It's pretty amazing what our people have done. And that, here we go. 22, more than 22 million Americans are currently unemployed yeah. as a result of this. Uh, today, we hit the grim milestone of more than 40,000 Americans uh, now having died from the coronavirus. Um, can you explain, then, why you come out here and you are reading clips and, and, uh, and showing clips of praise for you and for your administration? Is this really the time for self-congratulations? Well, I, I will tell you this. What I'm doing is I'm standing up for the men and women that have done such an incredible job. Not for me. For the men and women admirals, vice president, if I might, but all of the men and women, thousands, tens of thousands of them that built hospitals in New York and New Jersey and all over this country in record time that throw up a thousand beds in four days. I'm sticking up for those people. Those people have been incredible. I'm also sticking up for doctors and nurses and military doctors and nurses. And what you read earlier was praising you and your administration. All I played today was I Governor Cuomo to do that, sir. saying very positive things about the job the federal government has done. And those people, and those, have now died. And those people have been just absolutely excoriated by some of the fake news, like you, your CNN, your fake news. And let me just tell you, they were excoriated by people like you that don't know any better because you don't have the brains you were born with. You should be praising the people that have done a good job not doing what you do, even that question. So just so you understand, if we now, didn't do a the job. Is why now? Not why are you doing I'll tell it, you why, why now. now. Are you ready? Because these people are right now in hospitals. It's dangerous. It's going to a battlefield. And I want these people, I want you. I want you workers, in the sir. It's, it's about all doctors. about that. It's, all, it's about not about me. No, nothing's about me. You, look, friend. look, you're never going to treat me fairly, many of you. And I understand that. I, I don't even know. I got here with the worst, most unfair press treatment, they say, in the history of the United States for a president. They did say Abraham Lincoln had very bad treatment, too. Let, let me just tell you. It has your name in it. It talks about Trump remaking the playbook. Well, that's a positive thing, because that's an exercise in how to do it and what to do. And that's good for the future. People can learn from that. But I want the men and women of this country that are in danger the admirals and the generals that have done a job like they've never done before, they're in war. We're in war. You know, I call it the invisible enemy. That's a war. And it's a dangerous war. We're also at a level, when you said 40,000 people, and you're right, almost 40,000 people. And, and what ha Oh, more than. Okay, good. Correct me. Correct me. Okay, good. Well, I'm really glad you corrected me, CNN. But here, here's the story. Let me just tell you something. 
If we didn't do what we did, the 40,000 right now could be a million people. Could be a million people, not 40,000. It could be a million. We're tracking at much less than the lowest possible estimate. And that's a great tribute to a number of people and a number of things. One of the things that it's a tribute to is what's taken place in this country with the American people. Because they've gone inside, they've done it. They've done a job that nobody thought was possible. And in fact, when they did the models, as they call them, nobody thought it was possible. They did models not based on this kind of success. I've seen New York streets, and I see it in the morning. I've watched all my life New York streets. And you can't even see the pavement. There's so many people. And you take a look this morning. You take a look. Even on Friday morning, I looked at it. I saw it through a camera. There wasn't a person on Fifth Avenue. There wasn't a person on Madison Avenue. I've never seen anything like it because people have really listened to instructions, and they've listened to what we've had to say, and the professionals, they've listened. And those people, sh people should really give them a lot of credit, including people like you, because you just don't have the sense to understand what's going on. All right. I, I, no, I'm not. I, I think these people are uh, — I've never seen so many American flags. I mean, I, I'm seeing the same thing that you're seeing. I don't They're see it any differently. They're who? Nazi flags. Well, that I totally would say no way. But I've seen — I didn't see that. I see all — of course, I'm sure the news plays that up. I've seen American flags all over the place. I have never seen so many American flags at a rally as I have in the Israelis. These people love our country. They want to get back to work. Please, go ahead. More about pardoning Paul Manafort or Roger Stone so they're not exposed to coronavirus in jail. Well, I just tell you this uh, Roger Stone was treated very unfairly. Paul Manafort, the black book, turned out to be a fraud. We learned that out during the various last number of weeks and months. Uh, they had a black book that came out of Ukraine, turned out to be a fraud. Turned out to be a fraud. They convicted a man, turned out to be a fraud. General Flynn was a highly respected person. And it turned out to be a scam on him. The FBI said he didn't lie. And Mueller's people wanted him to go to jail. OK? So what am I going to do? You'll find out what I'm going to do. I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. But I will tell you, the whole thing turned out to be a scam. And it turned out to be a disgrace to our country. And it was a takedown of a duly elected president. And these people suffered greatly. General Flynn. I mean, what they did to him. And even the FBI said, and they had some, and nobody bigger fan of the FBI than me at the level of the people that really matter. But the top of the FBI was scum. And what they did to General Flynn, and you know it, and everybody knows it, was a disgrace. He was in the service for over 30 years. He ends up being a general and respected. Respected. And almost his first day in office, they come in with papers. They want to investigate him. Never happened before. And now the tables are turned. Investigate the investigators, I guess. These were crooked people. These are bad people. These are very dangerous people. You know what they are, though? They're scum. They're human scum. All right, do you want to have one in the back, please? President, Mr. President, go ahead. I'm President Xi. Um, you, you now talk about the missteps that China made uh, early on in this crisis and how it put you put the United States well, behind Well, based on an investigation, we're going to find out. Yeah. So, so when, when you repeatedly praised Xi in January and February, yeah, this guy you this said uh, he will solve the problem. You said he was doing a great job. Were you duped well, by President Xi? No, 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 no. I made a, a deal that's phenomenal uh, for the United States. No, you know who was duped? You. Yeah. You and, and the Obama administration were duped for years because China was ripping off this country like in the history of any country. Nobody's been ripped off like the United States by China and many other countries. And we stop it. And we've done, we've done a, we've done a deal where they're paying us 250. They are buying 250. They didn't do anything for us. You know, we didn't even have a deal. It was so bad. The deal. These comments no, no, are after no, no. It's, it is about a deal, because the deal started a long time ago, before anybody heard about this. The deal was finished uh, a number of months ago. Very happy. I was very happy. I hope they were happy. Billions of dollars came in in tariffs. Billions of dollars. They're going to be purchasing billions. And then all of a sudden, long after that, I find out about 
this. Right, and I told you, I told you, I'm not, listen, listen, CNN, listen, CNN, I told you I'm not happy about it. And this was after the deal. So we have this wonderful deal. And I was very, nobody's been tougher before the deal ever on China than Trump. Then I made a deal. I was very happy with the deal. It's a great deal, great for our farmers. The farmers have been paid a fortune already. Then what happened? No mistake, we made a great deal. Now I find out after the deal, after the deal, not do it, after the deal, I find out that I'm not happy. You, you people are so pathetic at CNN. Let me just tell you, sure, I was very happy with the deal, very happy with everything. Then we find out about the plague, right, the plague. And since we found out about that, I'm not happy. But I closed it up long before Pelosi, listen, long before Pelosi, you know, she was having parties in San Francisco, let's all go to Chinatown. And that was a long time after I closed up the country. Go ahead, please. That's why your ratings are so bad, because you're pathetic. Go ahead, let's go. Your ratings are terrible. You got to get back to real news. Go ahead. The first of the month is next week. So for people that are worried about